Good morning, everyone. It is August 16th, and wow, we've got a monster hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricane Aaron strengthened rapidly overnight. It went from a Category 2 hurricane at 11 p.m. to now a Category 4 hurricane, and it's still strengthening. A classic-looking storm uh, in the Atlantic Ocean, and thankfully it is passing north of the islands right now. Here's the eye of Hurricane Aaron. It is safely to the north of the Caribbean islands, which is some good news here. We've got uh, St. Bart, St. Marin over toward the Virgin Islands and Anguilla, and the storm is well to the north, about 200 miles north of the islands. And it's going to continue to move off to the west and northwest as we go through through the day today and move farther away from the islands. Now, that doesn't mean there won't be any impact. It looks like we will see some strong gusty winds and some heavy rain from Puerto Rico east toward uh, the Virgin Islands, St. Martin, Anguilla, Barbuda, probably getting some gusty winds and some squally rain, but nothing that they can't handle, nothing uh, terribly out of the ordinary. Uh, they're very lucky here because Aaron strengthened uh, rapidly overnight, and it looks like a very powerful hurricane. Let's take a look at the visible satellite loop, and you can see here, notice a white shading that is completely symmetrical around the eye. That is indicative of a very strong hurricane. Uh, we probably are going to get pretty close to Category 5 strength later this morning. Morning, and then some fluctuations in intensity after that. Uh, but a very classic looking hurricane here. You can see the white shades. Uh, let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. Uh, good outflow with the storm. And then, of course, that center of circulation, that central dense overcast with a very, very tall 70,000 foot tall uh, thunderstorm towers wrapping all the way around the eye. And a lot of times you see in a storm like this, they wrap part of the way around the eye or they're stronger on one side than the other. This is almost perfectly symmetrical. So uh, it is a beautiful hurricane. And again, the storm is going to be passing to the north of land out of the Atlantic Ocean, the open Atlantic. So some issues there probably for uh, mariners for sure, but at least for land, we're in good shape. So let's take a look at what we've seen from the hurricane hunters. The Air Force Reserve and NOAA have been flying around Aaron overnight. And this morning they were able to capture that rapid intensification. And these are the center fixes that we've gotten from the hurricane hunters this morning. Uh, the first one here from this NOAA plane was 951 millibars, which is a sizable hurricane for sure. But the subsequent two uh, fixes saw the pressure drop rapidly. That's 942 and now 935. And so as the storm has moved basically due west, uh, we've seen a very uh, precipitous drop in pressure. And the lower the pressure gets, the stronger the hurricane is. So if you were in the eye of that hurricane holding a barometer and moving along with the eye, you would see that pressure dropping and that indicates the hurricane is getting uh, stronger and stronger and the winds here are just hellacious um, uh, in the eye wall of this hurricane you're looking at winds here uh, in the lowest 150 meters of 115 knots the lowest 500 meters at 119 knots so it is a very powerful hurricane um, as it moves on through. So the question is, where is it going? And no change to our thinking here. Our computer models remain in very good agreement. The storm is going to move to the west and then turn to the north. It gets to about 70 degrees west, and that should be about uh, maybe 72, but as far west as it's going to get. And then it begins the recurve out into the Atlantic Ocean, away from land, and it looks like it's going to pass far enough to the west of Bermuda that Bermuda should avoid any direct impacts uh, actually, any serious impacts. They'll get some impacts. They'll get some of the outer rain bands of uh, Hurricane Aaron, but a more significant uh, hit is not expected. Maximum sustained winds now at Aaron 145, moving to the west northwest at 20. So a really, really powerful storm uh, as it moves through. So let's take a look at Aaron here. This is Puerto Rico. This is the Dominican Republic. Here are the islands off to the east, and you can see uh, Aaron passing to the north, close enough to bring some of that squally rain and some gusty winds uh, to places like Anguilla and St. Martin and St. Bart's and uh, the Virgin Islands, but uh, nothing terribly substantial. The storm, again, the worst of it stays to the north. And then as it moves into the open ocean, it begins to, uh, it sort of holds its own with intensity, but the storm gets bigger and bigger. And you typically see that as these storms move to the north, uh, they begin to increase in size. And as for the track, no change here with thinking the storm's moving to the west. Um, and it's trapped between a ridge here over the U.S. and a ridge out of the Atlantic Ocean. You've got this good weakness that develops um, over Bermuda, uh, the east coast of the United States, and that allows the storm to move to the north, and it gets captured and moved out to sea uh, well to the east of the east coast of the United States. So again, we've got that break in the ridge, and that's what's allowing the storm uh, to move out to sea. If you look over portions of Canada, you can see this dip here. 
Uh, this is a trough of low pressure, and this is going to protect all of the east coast of the United States from seeing a direct impact from the storm. To get a hurricane to get to the mid-Atlantic or New England, you want a big high-pressure ridge over here. And we've got the opposite of that right now. Um, and so that's why we're not expecting uh, any direct impacts to the eastern U.S. So in terms of the spaghetti model plot, this is the super ensemble, the European, the GFS, and the Canadian all lumped into one. And you can see there is not one computer model, there's not one outlier here that takes the storm into the United States. Even Cape Hatteras is close, but far enough offshore um, and you can see here the track again west and then north and then once it gets caught the jet stream goes out to sea so the different um, computer models the black line here that's an average of all of them um, and then the red is the european uh, the blue is the uk met and the green which is sort of tucked in here is the gfs and so all of them all three different models and really good um agreement here with the uh, expected track of the storm so uh, that is good to see uh, again no real change our computer models have been in a really tight agreement here and that agreement continues um, as the air moves off to the west and eventually to the north uh, this is the trend for the last few um, computer model runs you can see the storm has come a little bit farther west than what our models were showing a couple days ago but uh, the last few runs uh, this black line sort of right on top of the maroon lines and that shows that in the past day there's been really no change at all in the computer model uh, expected track of the storm so uh, really really good signal here that uh, we're in pretty good shape when it comes to the forecast and it has not come any farther east which is good i was a little worried it might sort of wobble back east a little bit which would put bermuda uh in a more significant threat but it does not look like that's going to happen so uh good news there uh the one issue that's going to happen as the storm gets up north again i mentioned a little bit ago as the storm gains latitude it gets farther north it begins to expand it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and check this out this is by uh thursday morning uh, of next week and look how big the wind field is with hurricane Aaron. it stretches past bermuda um well east of bermuda and then extends all the way to the north uh up toward the cape, cape cod and long island and uh new jersey so this is a huge area it's basically taking up uh if you were to draw a line here the diameter of this wind field is basically from maine all the way down to georgia so this is a huge hurricane it's strong in the middle uh, it's very intense near the eye but it takes up a ton of real estate and that's going to generate some really powerful waves waves are generated the swells are generated by the strength of the wind over how much of a fetch that wind is if you've got a really strong hurricane or really strong winds over a very short duration the waves are not going to be as big but you get those winds to go over the course of 100 miles, 200 miles, 300 miles, in this case, probably close to 1,000 miles, uh, you're going to get much, much bigger waves. And our computer models are showing some giant waves with this thing. Uh, this is uh, the, one, the European model uh, wave height prediction, and it's showing waves up to about 100 feet with this thing and some big time swells uh, making it toward the beaches um, of portions of uh, New England down to the mid-Atlantic and down toward the Carolinas as well so we're gonna see some really big I can switch this over here let me show you let me switch this over to swells just to show you what we've got coming toward the beaches uh, here uh, so Cape Cod down through Rhode Island Long Island and then before that even down uh, all the way down toward Florida you're looking at swells that will be approaching 10 feet some areas some exposed areas even higher 12, 13, 14 foot swells. And those are long period swells. The longer the period, the bigger space between the swells, <coughs> excuse me, the st stronger the wave is. Uh, these are very powerful waves and I expect some really serious rip currents as these uh, waves propagate from the center of air toward the coast. So if you're gonna be on the beach next week, starting on Monday down to the southeast and then by Thursday up in New England and the northeast, I uh, expect some very powerful swells and rip currents, so very dangerous for swimming. If you don't know what you're doing, great for surfers, but not great for everyone else. So thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll keep you posted on Aaron again. A very powerful storm could be getting close to a category five later on this morning. Our first hurricane of the season, certainly not disappointing, but the good news is staying away from land, the storm's gonna pass fairly harmlessly out to sea between North Carolina and Bermuda, some impact in terms of swells and rip currents, but at least for any direct impacts to land, we're not expecting any.